Welcome to Spry Whimsy Fiber Arts. I'm Peter. I was requested by one of our viewers to make a video on pre-felts. Uh, so that's going to wind up being a two-part video. So today I'm going to show you how to make a pre-felt and also some uses for pre-felts in assorted projects I've done in the past. Then I will do a second video showing the use of a pre-felt in a project. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. All right, let's get started. So, supplies I use. Let's start with, we have some wool roving in varying colors. Um, this is all merino that I'll be working with today. I hit, will be using some soapy water. And for that, I use palm olive free and clear for my soap. Just a little dash in here, mixed up. Then I use my ball sprinklers to distribute it onto the work surface. We'll be using the palm washboard from Heartfelt Silks, um, uh, along with this work surface of a solar pool cover. And then I have some netting here that I'll be using on top of my work that I will rub this with. You'll see that. And we'll probably throw in some accents of bamboo and silk and things on top of this just to give our... Um, pre-felt a little extra life. So let's get started. All right, so to start, we're just going to, now this one, I'm gonna start with a blue background, which admittedly probably is not the best thing for you to see in a video on a blue here, but it's the effect that I'm looking for today so let me grab a little bit of light blue to get started here. And when I'm working with this, I'm just pulling off little bits. You can see the thickness there that I'm looking at and laying that down and just continually doing that with smooth overlapping layers. Don't want it all laid all down at once. Thin overlapping layers is what you're usually looking for. I'm going to stop there for the moment. I'm going to shift color. I do like to have a variety of colors, especially in pre-felt because it's kind of fun. That's the whole joy of this is being able to lay out color patterns that you can't otherwise do. Um, because we're going to be cutting this, which will allow us some more flexibility later. And I'm just going to keep going, laying this out, thin overlapping layers. Now you'll notice in a second here, as I run out of this color, and I have to go back to the dark blue, you'll notice that as I lay this out, there's a crisp edge and a fuzzy edge. As I lay it out, I want my fuzzy edges to continue along what's going to be the bottom of this pre-felt. We're not seeing this side with this crisp edge. We're going to see the fuzzy edges there. And to give you a better example, let me just show you here. That's the fuzzy. See how it transitions in? Where here you have a sharp line. But uh, when it's looking at it from below, which we will when we look at this side of it, it will have that smooth transition. So I'm just going to keep laying out my first layer here. Now, one of the reasons I'm going blue here is basically I'm going to be creating somewhat of a flame effect with my pre-felt. And this is based off of something I'd done in the past where I made a pre-felt that looked like flames by using all the different colors of a flame. And I use blue as a part of that color. But what happens with a pre-felt and I can show you on this little sample here. So this part is a pre-felt and you can see I have one, two, three different colors blending through with different greens. But you see that outer edge? That's the backside of the cut. So that edge line will show up. So if I do a pre-felt on the top where it looks like the colors of a flame and I have this blue, it'll have a blue outline to it. And that's what I'm looking for. 
Now you can make that anything you want, but that is what I am looking for today. Now, you'll have to see that in the end result in the second video if, if all goes well. So I'm just going to keep laying out here a little more, get a few more rows in before I put my top layer down. So why a pre-felt? Well, what a pre-felt is, is a not quite felted item. I'm just basically making a thin layer of fabric made out of wool that is not completely felted so I will be able to come in later cut that fabric once it dries and make shapes that I can't lay out fiber in especially with different color patterns and thicknesses or length of fiber because the fiber is what it is in length fiber comes off the sheep at that length that's what I have to work with. I could cut it shorter and things, but when you do that, you wind up with some weird fuzzy edges and things don't quite felt together the same as the natural fibers we got here and the lengths. Okay, I'm gonna get to the end here. I'm gonna flip over my last row and give myself a crisp edge. See, I have a more straighter edge there. And that is layer one, done. That's all I'm putting on that. Now, so that's the back side. Now I'm gonna start working towards the front. So I'm gonna go through this range of colors I have here. I'm gonna start with a very bright yellow and now I'm going the opposite direction. So I'm gonna lay this down, crisp edge to the outside edge. So I try not to waste any. I'm going to do another row of this color before I start to transition. So what I'll be able to do, the Y pre-felt, is I'll be able to cut this into shapes and then lay it onto another project and that crisp edge shaped object will become part of another um, the look of something else. And I'll give you good examples of that when I'm done making this pre-felt in some of my other projects. Okay, so there's my first section there. Now I'm gonna to start to transition into some other colors. Now, like I said before, I want to feather it in. Right now, this is feathering this way, but what I really need to do is if I lay this down, feathering out over here, I get an edge. I don't want that. I want it to feather that way so I get a smooth transition. Now, if I want to go even smoother, what I'll do is I'll take my two colors like this, and I'm going to still use a little bit of this yellow in my transition to this orange. And work my way along. Now, I'm not the best, this, this layout isn't the best in my hand right now, but we'll get through it. A little bit at a time. Smooth out that transition. Okay, so the next round, now I'll get rid of my yellow and just go with the orange. And that'll soften that edge a little bit more by having that blended section in there. Now, when it comes down to it, and of course, after this is shrunk, well, it won't shrink much before I, as a pre-felt. There's not a whole lot of shrinking involved. As I come along with this, I can cut pieces that go the length and use these actual distances of the fiber. Or if I cut it a bit of a diagonal, they become sh or shortened pieces. I'm not working on just that color length that I laid out. It can actually be a little shorter or longer, I guess, when I go that way. So I'm going to start another transition here. 
Actually, I want red. Let's get to the red. So again, taking the two colors, overlapping them. I'm going to start my transition to red now. You can barely see the red coming in. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. I want you don't even want you to notice how it transitions in the end. It just somehow turns from one color to the next, like a soft blending. And this is the best way to get that soft blending in fiber. Now I flipped it over where the red is now on top. Got a little bit of orange on the bottom. Okay, it's an extra static -y day today. I'm having a little static issue, but hopefully things will stay where I put them. I don't like to set and move. I just want to set things down and be done with it. Don't want to have to move it after I've set it down. That's when you really mess things up. So I had yellow, yellow, orange, solid orange, orange on top of red, red on top of orange, and now just going strips of straight orange or straight red. Feathering it in. Now that's just the way I like to work things. I really like my color blends and transitions to be smooth as I can make them. All right, there's all red section. Now, I'm gonna to start to go into another world a little bit. I'm gonna start transitioning into this more amber color off the red. Again, thin overlapping layers. You don't want your stuff to be too thick. You want thickness, add more layers. But if you do thick layers, what happens is they're more likely to felt to themselves as a clump and not to their neighbors. You want thin layers that overlap. All right, I gotta make a little sleeve adjustment here. I'm sticking to my sleeve, I think. Let's get that rolled up. Okay, so again, I'm laying down two colors. Right now it is very staticky. That's what it is. The amber on top of the red. There we go. Now we'll never be looking at this as a solid piece. It's all about the cut up sections of it. All right, set my red aside. Going to this. So this is actually, I believe, nutmeg is a color name. All right, so now I'm solid nutmeg. It's pulling much better when it's alone. It's not as staticky. A little bit, but not as much. but I'm really working on trying to do a smooth color transition that's really hard to notice with the eye. Now I'm gonna start shifting into a new color. This is the tangerine blended in with it. And again, I'm gonna start with the nutmeg on top with a little tangerine on the bottom. Smooth overlapping layers. That's what we're always going for here. All right, now I'm flipping over again. Now I'll have the tangerine on top of the nutmeg for this transition. Let's adjust my fiber here. Go. 
Okay, now dropping out of color, going solid with the tangerine. Now, just a note, as I'm grabbing this, I'm only grabbing the top. I'm not trying to grab deep down in there. I'm just trying to grab the top and let it slide out. So I just get thin pieces, not too heavy, thin overlapping layers. Try to be efficient with it. Not grabbing too much, not taking too much time by grabbing too little. Now we're going to go back to that first color that I started with. So we're going to come full circle with this fabric. Do a little transition here to the yellow. Get some of that in there. I'm going to go all yellow to finish this off. Sometimes the fibers in a color come out longer than others, and it feels like this yellow seems like extra long fibers today. Just the way it is. And there is my color palette laid down. And then I'm going to pause this for a second and get ready to move into the wet portion. Well, if you're anywhere at all observant, you'll notice that I have a different color now. Um, I accidentally just recorded audio and not video when I did my whole segment on how to the next step here. So I laid out a second um, pre-felt here. Um, so we got all the fluffy layout done and now we're going to get on to the next steps. So I'm going to start out with my sprinkler here with my soapy water and I'm just going to dampen this down at first just so to knock some of the fluffies out. I'm not giving it all the water it needs right now because next I'm going to add some shimmery fibers to it. So I got some mulberry, some dyed mulberry silk here that's in similar colorway to the fibers that I have laid out now. And I'm just going to put a bunch of that on here. Stretching it out. Covering this up. Mixing up my colors. So this is the part in the other fabric that I did that I used some silk and some bamboo to do this. What happens is wool itself is not shiny. It has a very dull texture. So by adding some of these other fibers to your project, you can add a shimmery effect. And as the wool shrinks, it actually kind of pulls this stuff in differently because this doesn't shrink. It'll get grabbed by the wool from underneath and then get all sorts of crinkly. So we're just gonna add this all over. Try to stretch it out so it's not so defined. I wanna get into different color sections of this so it doesn't all look the same. So it's still going to let the base color come through, but it's going to alter what happens on top here. Just spreading it out and stretch it out. Not be too organized with it. Get it laid on. I'm actually going to kind of break this up. I don't want it to be organized at all on this one. I don't want to mess up my fibers underneath, but this can be all kinds of swirly and 
tangled. A little cobwebby. And in this one, you know, the last one I laid down, I had a blue background. This one has a dark green bottom layer, and we'll see that in a little bit. Okay, that's about what I wanted to do with that. Set that aside. Now we're going to wet this down more with the soapy water. Now, just to be clear, the soap is doing a couple things. It's breaking the surface tension. So the water gets into the wool because wool is naturally water resistant. It's altering the pH of the fibers um, so that it opens the scales on the fibers so they are more likely to interlock with their neighbors. And it's also providing a little bit of lubrication to the project. So I'm gonna throw my mesh over this now. Grab my palm washboard from Heartfelt Silks, and I'm going to gently start working this in. And the mesh is here so you don't disturb your fibers. Things stay right where you put them. So however I laid out my colors and laid out my accent fibers, they stay right where I wanted them to be. So I'm doing this very gently. Not much more weight, more than the weight of the tool right now tool, meaning this, not the fabric. As I gently work it into solar pool cover, which is the work surface. So as I work this in, eventually, if I have enough water on it, and it's getting in there, you'll start to see, you can really see it through here, that the bubbles of the solar pool cover are starting to show through. That's telling me that the project has set into the work surface. And as I work it, it should stay put. So now I can start rubbing a little harder, a little more aggressive with it. Now, when you're working on something like this, you want to take full advantage of your movement. Don't pick it up, move it, pick it up, move it, because that's wasting the back and forth. That's why we want to make sure it's set in first, so we can move freely and really agitate these fibers. You want to work them in all directions, too. So I'm going to go all the way from end to end, back and forth, top to bottom. Change my direction, top to bottom, all the way from one end to the other. Up and down, not picking up as I go. Make sure you get your edges good. Now I'm gonna do diagonal, one end to the other. Change my diagonal, go the other way. Now as I'm working this, I'm starting to see some fibers coming through. So I've got some clumps here of fibers that are the color that I'm working on. They started to sneak through this fabric. Jeez, I'm getting about how far I want to go before it starts to stick to the fabric. Do this a little bit more. And then side to side. All right. Now I can peel it off. So that's my first side. The accent fibers, you can see a little bit of the color, but it doesn't have the shimmer right now. That shimmer comes later when it dries. And we're going to flip this over to the green side. And I got two greens going on here. Now, sometimes the water doesn't get through to everywhere. I still have a few spots that seem a little dry. Part of it is the fact that my table has a high spot and a dip. So there's some spots where I just need to give it a little mist. 
get those last fibers wet. And then work it again, just like we did. First gently, make sure I'm set into the product and project. Once I know I'm set in, we rub some more. Just working it away. Now, I could work it a lot more than this too. And I'll show you a project a uh, little bit that I did work my pre-felt much harder. But this is just getting it to the point where I know I can cut it. That's the whole goal here, is to be able to have a pre-felt that I can cut and add to another project. So now all I'm gonna do is take this Fold it, fold it, fold it. I'm going to take, drag it over to my sink and wring it out quick. Get rid of the sloppy wet. And I really just squeeze that out. And then gently open it back up. Because it's not that well felted. So if I do more than that, it may start to felt together. We don't want that. Lay it back out. There's my two sides. I'm going to take this to the drying rack, let it dry, and at the end of the video, I'll show you. I'll cut it up into pieces, and then I'll merge that into the second video of how I incorporate this into a project. But what I'll do while this is drying is I'm going to take you around my shop as if you were one of my students. And showing you how I have incorporated a pre-felt into other objects or uh, other projects um, that I've done in the past. So let's go for a wander. All right, so I'm going to show you what the pre-felts can do. So what we're looking at right here is a template that I'll show you in a second how I used it. This is a template that I used for pre-felt. Now part of that, I made a pre-felt in black, marked it off with this template, and cut away all the holes and left behind the what you see here in white. And you'll see that in a second in the, some rose window quilts I have up front of the shop. Now the cutaways, since I had to cut away so much, I had all these little pre-felt cutaways that made perfect circles in different sizes. I incorporated some of those into other projects. So in this case, I put this polka dots of the black and incorporated into this hood that I made. A glue head there. And it's just a really simple way of adding shapes, crisp circles that you could not lay out um, with fiber. Okay, moved up to the front of our store. And what I've got here are a couple of pieces made based on rose windows. That template I showed you in the back was based on something my mother had done when she made some rose window quilts. So I decided I was gonna take that concept and I made a few different things with it. Um, this particular case, I made black pre-felt and I made it much thicker than what we just showed you to do layering pre-felt. This one, the black pre-felt and all those detailed lines and all the details in there, I had to start with the black pre-felt and then cut away everything else. So I had to make sure it was good and firm before I put, put it down. So then I, after I made the pre-felt, cut it out, I laid it on my table, got it a little damp so it stayed put, and then started backfilling. So if you look closely there, I've got a whole bunch of silk fibers 
and then the pre-felt, and then I laid the colors behind those fibers. In another one over here, I worked with fabrics. So in those holes, you can see some fabric in there, a different fabric set through the center of the window there, and then working with silk fat fibers, and then the wool behind that, and just layering it up. So in this case, I used the pre-felt as a foreground. Using that same pattern, over here, I used pre-felts to put into a bag. So I started with my purple background, cut out all those different pieces out of pre-felt, and incorporated those right into the bag to make a similar design. This is just a portion of the bigger um, window design, but it's the same concept. Now let's look at some wearables. Here I have a Nuno felted sh shawl. And the purple sections, the squares, those are pre-felts. Those are kind of fun as they're worked into it. They work in really well into a Nuno felted piece. And you can see that they're all from the same piece of fabric. And if I flip this over, you can see what they look like on the backside. It's interesting when you work a pre-felt in, the edges the fuzzy edges really work through more than the middle and give you an outline to it. And in this case, you can see that they have the green blues on the other end. So that pre-felt had a variation from one end to the other, the green blue to the purples. I've also worked it into a fabric that I used in a jacket back panel. So this one, these pieces here are the pre-felt. Work down to a brown fabric, um, wool fabric that has a whole bunch of crazy laid out silk fibers on top of it. And there's that little bit of a red edge from some bamboo that gives it that little detail. So that gives you, you can see it's definitely from one piece of fabric, all the different pieces of pre-felt cut out. They all look like they belong together, but it gives me a kind of layout that I couldn't lay out. I could not lay out a section that short of that darker green just a little bit and not have it spill over. So the cutting really helps make that work. Now over here in Vessel Land, I got a few different things with pre-felts in it. So let's take a look at this one first. So the blues over the purple, the purple is the base, in this case the blues are the pre-felt. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell which is which. It's a little three-dimensional here, so it's kind of obvious in this one. But some other ones, it's hard to tell when you're just looking at the design, which part is the pre-felt and which part is the background color, just the way they lay out. It's like, I can't tell, but this one, it's still kind of obvious that the darker red is the pre-felt. Here, the reds on the green are the pre-felt. There, the reds on the black are the pre-felt. And when we get down here, we can start looking at some of the detail on that. So in this one, we've got red with some bamboo shimmer to it on a dull background. And you can see the outline edge from the color on the back of this pre-felt snuck around and gives me an outline edge on the whole piece. Now on the piece next to it, we have the same thing going on. When you look up close, I have a little orange edge to it. And you can see my pre-felt had some silk on it to add a little extra texture. I don't have that going on in here. Now this particular piece also uh, used a cutaway resist. So we've got a whole nother layer. We've got the vessel, the base vessel. We've got a pre-felt on top of it. And between layers, I put in some fish leather, covered that with some plastic, then laid on more of the base fiber and then the pre-felt on it, felted it together, and then cut away to reveal and remove the plastic to reveal that fish leather. So, and there's another pre-felt one down there. The, in this particular one, the pre-felt isn't as strong because the interior of this vessel was made from alpaca. The alpaca has a fuzzier fiber than the merino and it works its way, the inside fibers work the way to the outside. When I'm looking at the merino up here, what's on the inside is on the inside, what's on the outside is on the outside. 
But when you add that other kind of fiber in there, it works its way through all those layers of merino and just softens the whole thing up in the look. So it's not as crisp and tidy. And another one over here, where again, the red is the pre-felt. And again, some of that shimmer on there, give a little more detail. We're gonna focus, there we go. And you can see it's a little slightly different texture. Now, one of my other projects last year was to make some seat covers. So on these, these are just laying out fibers. This is just nothing more than the silks and the wool laid out in a radiating pattern. This one happened to incorporate some fibers from a scarf. But in this one, it's all about the pre-felts. So that's crisp, hard lines that I get out of this. And seeing how I go from a dull with just little bits of accents of silks into something with some strong bamboo. I can't lay out bamboo like that. It has to be cut into that kind of shape. All right. First pre-felt I made today is now dry, or dry enough. It's still a little damp on the ends, but in the middle it's dried off. And if we look closely here, it's not a solid felt. It's still thin, fluffy layers. But it's held together enough that I can now do some cutting. So we're going to look at our two sides here. There's the blue side. There's the red, yellow side. And if you look close now, you can also see here's some of those silk fibers I laid down. And here's some of the bamboo fibers on top of the wool. They're just slightly felted in for now, but they'll become more felted in when we work this into something else. So all we're going to do is we're on our rolly mat, the roller cutter mat. Take our roller cutter. My other hand is far away from the work surface. I've got too many friends who have cut themselves with uh, roller cutters. And we're just going to make a cut. And you'll be able to see how wonderful this cuts. So I just peel that off. Whoops. So that's part of the slightly felted. Let's see if we can see what I just did there. So I just made this big cut, cut this big piece out, and I will incorporate that into something else. Now, part of it being a pre-felt is it's not fully felted yet. And we'll see that obviously on the back side here, where when I peel this off, part of it I must not have cut through. And so some of it stayed behind but what I care about is more about the front side than the back side right now. So that's going to be a great piece to incorporate into something else. So you have to watch the next video when I put pre-felt onto something else. I've babbled on long enough today. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.